Hello and welcome everybody to my new video. This time I will speak about 3D modeling again. This time it's about snail shells. So again, as in the previous video, it is about a linear structure. About a linear structure, however, curved in a very regular way. So this time we don't need to do a random walk. We only have to apply simple mathematical formulas to generate our structure. And this doesn't happen very often in nature, so we should appreciate it. Before we start, let me shortly remind you of some things from the previous video, which was about more irregular thread-like structures. In order to model this little worm here, we first used something like a random walk to define positions, then we placed meter balls onto these positions, and finally we applied color and texture to our structure. Meter balls are my favorite modeling tool, spheres of increasing density towards the center, which you can add to each other or subtract, this way generating smooth organic surfaces. Finding positions, filling them with meter balls and then coloring and texturing the structure is the general outline of how I model things and I will apply this outline for most of the videos about modeling. There is still another remark. When I am speaking about positions or points, in reality I am speaking about vectors. Porphyry offers nice tools to work with vectors and I hope your favorite modeling program does as well since vectors really are essential for what we are doing here. I think I will add a small intro into working with vectors in a later video. So let's start with snail shells. How can we define them mathematically? Let's have a look and let's start with our final product. When we look at subsequent turns of the spiral, we observe that these turns increase in size with each rotation around the y-axis and that this increase occurs in an exponential way. That's why we call them logarithmic spirals. How can we express this exponential increase in mathematical terms? First, let's impose a coordinate system onto the snail shell. It is most practical if we put the origin on the very top of the snail shell. Here, the growth of the shell started, and here we will also start our model. The geometry of the snail shell can be expressed in two terms. The distance of the center of a given turn from the y-axis, d for distance, and its negative y-coordinate, which we will call h or h. These terms are depending on the angle alpha, the turn of the shell shell, snail shell around the y-axis in an exponential way. Therefore, we can set out these two equations with the various k-values as constants. We will have to play around with our system to find k-values fitting to our structure. There is still another term which has to increase in an exponential way, the radius of the sphere or meter ball used for establishing our structure. This radius is also depending on the angle alpha in an exponential way. So we can set out a very similar equation in this case. So let's summarize what we have to do within one loop when we want to establish the snail shell. First we have to increase the angle alpha by a certain amount. Given this new angle alpha, we can calculate d, h and r, the distance from the y-axis, the negative position on the y-axis and the radius of the turn. d and h are used to determine a position which is then rotated by the angle alpha around the y-axis. Finally, this position is stored and we are ready for the next loop. If we increase the angle alpha by 30 degrees in each loop, we will obtain a structure like this. By decreasing this angle and by using additive meter balls, we obtain our first snail-like structure and by adjusting the radius it actually starts resembling a real snail. Meter balls can be additive or subtractive and for producing a hollow snail we have to use subtractive meter balls of a slightly smaller radius. In order to open the snail shell exit we have to make the loop for the subtractive meter balls a few elements longer than the loop for the other meter balls. In Porphyry, the color and texture of the inner wall of the snail shell will be determined by color and texture of the subtracted meter balls. Since we have the radius of our turns, we can also place decorative elements on the outside of the shell. We have to use the same loop as outlined above with the addition that we start this loop by placing our point on the x-axis in distance r from the y-axis. Eventually, this point can also be rotated around the z-axis by a certain angle before starting the loop for the shell. What is this good for? Have a look at this snail where we put one element onto the x-axis without rotating it. After applying the snail shell loops to this transformed and pretty small element, we will observe a stripe circling our snail shell. 
by using several such elements and by rotating each one by an incremental angle around the z-axis, we will observe a number of these drives. These drives were not added as metaballs for, to the large shell as such because the color would have been lost. Sometimes, however, it makes sense to actually fuse decorative metaballs with the large shell. Here we have got two elements differing in the rotation around the z-axis by about 90 degrees. By displaying them only every 10th loop, we can install nice decorative elements for our smash. When I looked at this shell, I found the opening a bit dark and boring. So I installed an additional light right in the center of the opening, which is now radiating from the inside. The exponential equations for the snail shell contain many arbitrary constants. By playing around with these constants, a whole range of various snail shells is accessible. As in the case with thread-like structures from the last video, you may place other things than metaballs onto the positions calculated. Here are some of my experiments, feel free to try it out yourself. So this was all I wanted to tell you about the construction of snail shells for ray tracing. As a logical follow-up video, I would recommend my video on the golden angle, where also a fixed mathematical procedure is used to construct widespread biological structures.